specifically and what we as solar advocates and people who are concerned about sea level rise and global warming and, and clean air and water need to be doing. Just FYI, if we put solar panels on one half of one percent of the land area in Georgia, exclusive of all the water bodies, we could power the entire state with solar photovoltaic at the day's levels of efficiency. Without any incentives, solar costs ballpark 12 and a half, 12, 12 and a half cents a kilowatt hour. And I'm sure Robert has some better numbers on this at his level. But uh, as I mentioned, Georgia Power pays 5.6 cents a kilowatt hour for what they call their avoided cost. The, the big flaw of this system is their avoided cost is calculated on nothing but the cost of the fuel, which is primarily coal, and what it costs them to power the plant up and down to burn that fuel. They don't have to consider the cost of the plant the cost of mining, transportation, environmental degradation. Um, for example, when they get these two new reactors, if they ever get these two new reactors at Bogle online, um, there's a guy at George Power who was in one of these workshops one time, and he said, we're going to be generating clean nuclear power for a half a cent a kilowatt hour. And going, how can we do doing that with what's going on with a 15 or $20 billion project? He said, oh, we don't have to factor that in. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. This is not all this playing field. So, um, there was a recent study, and I encourage you to look this up. Uh, uh, Center for Health and Global Environment at Harvard did a study uh, about a year or two ago that calculated the true cost of coal. And I've seen several studies that do this. This is the most recent, I think, the best documented. But excluding all the other factors, so just mining and burning coal costs, and, and it costs 8.8 8 cents a kilowatt hour, not 5.6. That doesn't even include transmission and, and the other factors that obviously need to go into that. If the direct impacts caused by exposure to particulate matter directly related to coal combustion, I'm talking asthma, heart conditions, there's a lot of stuff directly proven to be attributed to coal fire generation. That cost jacks it up to 18 cents a kilowatt hour. And if you factor in the monetized health, monetized health impacts, what it costs people to go to the hospital for these issues, what we're paying to subsidize the ones who are on Medicaid, that jacks it up to about 27 cents a kilowatt hour. And this is a really well documented study. I encourage you to look it up. So, Georgia Power's mantra is coal is good because it's so cheap. No, it's not. It's really not. Even, even looking at real numbers. So, what we need to do going forward, uh, Buddy Carter sponsored uh, Senate Bill 401 in the last session. He has told me personally he will be bringing it back in this coming session in January. It allows third-party solar sales, which make all kinds of sense. It would, it, right now, I can't let you in and put solar panels on your roof and pay me back out what you say. It's illegal. The, and, and this is part of the Georgia Power monopoly that I'm sure Robert's going to get into in depth, so I'm not going to go too much into that. But we need to talk to the state legislature, uh, to, to everyone we know out there. We need to talk to our public service commissioners and say, we want a real number for avoided costs based on how these things are constructed. On um, capital costs, of building a plant, whether you have an existing plant, you want to appreciate that, fine. But consider the cost of the grid, consider the operations and maintenance, which are just written off. Consider, okay, don't even worry about the environmental degradation. You're still going to come up with nuclear being 15 to 20 cents a kilowatt hour at a bare minimum, um, which makes both, both solar and offshore wind look pretty favorable by comparison. There's a lot of room to compromise. 26 states currently have net metering laws requiring any power company within that state boundary to pay retail price for any renewable energy going into the grid from any source, whether it's residential, commercial, or utility scale. We're obviously in the bottom half of the country on that. We have no semblance of a net metering bill. Closest thing we've got is this very limited program for, for single directional metering, and that's totally inadequate for the scale of where we need. 